Okay, so we're going to solve this problem. It's similar to 2.13 that you did in the quiz or the example uh, practice problem. However, you'll note that the force here is inclined. So this force here is inclined, and so it won't be as, as straightforward as example 2.13 where the force was pointing straight up and all we had to do was get the horizontal distance. The author in the textbook um, resolves this force into one force that's going perpendicular and one force that's going along the line of the action of the lever. And what happens is the one that's going along the line of the action of the lever falls out of the equation. What we're going to do here is I'm going to approach this a little bit differently. I'm going to I'm going to turn resolve the force into a vertical component and a horizontal component and then we'll multiply the vertical component by the horizontal distance x and the horizontal component times the vertical distance y to get our answer. So this is like the earlier problem with the crescent wrench but we're at doing it twice. Now the thing to note here is that about point zero about point zero, the horizontal force tends to spin this way, spin the lever this way. The vertical force, coming down like this, wants to spin it that way. Our moment, if you recall, m is force times perpendicular distance, has a positive and a negative sense. We use counterclockwise as positive for moment, so you can see that the horizontal force is tending to go counterclockwise, giving it a positive sense, and the vertical force is going clockwise, giving it a negative sense. And so they're, trying, they're working against each other, and so when we do the math, we're going to have to subtract the, the one that's going in the negative direction. Okay. So our moment will equal FH times Y, and that's going in a positive or counterclockwise sense, so that'll be plus, and F vertical times X, and that's going in a clockwise or negative sense, so we'll end up subtracting that value. So that will be what we're going to solve here. First thing we need to do is resolve the, the force, F, into a horizontal and a com vertical component. In order to resolve it in the vertical and horizontal component, we do need to know the angle that the force, F, makes with the horizontal. If we have 50 degrees here and 20 degrees here, then this angle will be 30 degrees with the horizontal. So FV is going to, equ going to equal F times the sine of 30 degrees and FH will equal F times the cosine of 30 degrees which equals 1.5 kilonewtons times 0 0.50 which equals 0.75 kilonewton and the horizontal will be 1.5 kilonewtons times 0 0.8660 which is equal to 1.2990 kilonewtons. The x direction x is going to be 300 millimeters times the cosine of 50 degrees, there's our 50 degrees right there, and y will equal 300 millimeters times the sine of 50 degrees, which is equal to 192.84 millimeters and 229.81 millimeters. A word of caution here, we have to make sure we carry 
um, enough significant digits so that we don't end up with round off error. So if we plug these values in, we get m is equal to fh 1.299 kilonewtons times 229.81 millimeters and then we get F V which is 0 0.75 kilonewtons and we multiply that by X which is 192.84 millimeters again we have the horizontal force FH which is going in a counterclockwise or a positive sense and FV which is going in a counterclockwise sense so that gets a negative and when we do the math on this we get 153.9 kilonewton millimeters okay and if we convert that to kilonewton meters to compare against the solution in the textbook we get 0 0.1539 kilonewton meters Note that in the textbook he came up with point, 0 0.153, so that 0 0.9 would round up to 0 0.154, uh, and that's th that difference has to do with some round off error. So to conclude, when we're doing when we have an inclined force and we're finding its moment about some point, for instance point O here, and here's our inclined force F the universal way of solving this is breaking down the force into a horizontal and a vertical component multiplying the horizontal component by the vertical distance from the point to the to the horizontal component taking the vertical component multiplying it by the horizontal distance and then to make sure you get the signs right um, always analyze which way is that force tending to spin the object around your point of concern? So the horizontal force trying to spin it in a counterclockwise, therefore it's positive. The vertical force is spinning in a clockwise sense, which is opposite of our sign convention, which is negative. And so you want to make sure that your signs on your solutions work out uh, correctly.